The Sega Mega Drive or Genesis if you're in North America is probably my favourite childhood console. I very fortunately grew up with an Amiga, Game Boy and Mega Drive and those years produced my most cherished gaming memories. While the console boasted blast processing and had incredible exclusives such as Streets of Rage, Sonic or Toe Jam and Earl. The Mega Drive saw myriad titles released in every possible genre, but there were a great many games that never saw the light of day, being cancelled at some point before release. Join me as we take a look at 20 of those unreleased games. Frog Dude was in development in 1993 from Twilight, but was never publicly announced for the Mega Drive. Starring the titular Frog Dude, who was a dude who could transform himself into an anthropomorphic frog, when he's in human form he's armed with a mace, and in his frog form he has a long tongue which he can use to collect fruits strewn throughout the levels and presumably attack enemies. I say presumably because the very early prototype available, released in 2014 by head programmer Andy Swan, is completely devoid of enemies. Lufia and the Fortress of Doom, developed by Neverland and published by Taito, is an RPG for the Super Nintendo but was also announced for the Genesis as a North American exclusive. The Genesis port of Lufia was shown at 1994 CES with an initial planned release date of December the same year but this was pushed back to early 1995 and then the port was cancelled altogether. Rumour has it that this was due to Taito closing their American branch in 1995, but in 2014 one of the port's programmers leaked an early demo of the Genesis version featuring only a test dungeon, citing the reason for the cancellation as Taito giving him a mere six months to complete the port, which was impossible, and he described the SNES code as quote, fucking indecipherable. Swamp Thing was in development from Microsmiths and to be published by New Vision. Based on the DC comics of the same name, Swamp Thing is a side-scrolling platformer in which the player controls Swamp Thing on a mission to protect the forest from various enemies. The prototype released by Sega Age in 2010 features only the first level but shows roughly how the game would have played. Swamp Thing can walk or swim around the levels and hit enemies, but can also take on the form of various inanimate forest objects such as logs and leaves. Some uninspiring graphics and reportedly terrible controls make this one game that's probably left on the discard pile. Smartvark, also known as Arnie the Aardvark, was a planned 1994 action platformer from Codemasters. Very little is known about the game or its cancellation, and only magazine screenshots are available, but it was to star the titular Smartvark, or Arnie, who was a TV repairman, or repair aardvark to be precise, who must enter different channels on a television to destroy the bugs causing the fault. Elite was probably the most advanced BBC micro game available, and so received numerous ports after its initial 1984 release. A space shooter and trading simulator, Elite was so vast in scope that it was streets ahead of anything else available in the 80s in that respect. A Mega Drive port was announced in 1992 by Hybrid Technology with a planned 1994 release date and is rumoured to have been a direct port of the original, albeit an improved version. Ian Bell, one of Elite's original developers, released a tech demo of the Mega Drive version of Elite which was created to pitch the game to publishers. The port didn't progress far beyond this though, as it was cancelled some time before the planned release date. Akira, based on the 1988 anime film, was planned for the Mega Drive and the Mega CD to be published by THQ. Akira was so popular in the late 80s and early 90s, so it's shocking that more games weren't developed to capitalise on its popularity. The only footage I could find of the game was some very old video of a video, so it's appalling quality, but shows that the game would have featured various gameplay styles from platforming to beat em up elements and motorcycle combat sequences. Unfinished footage from the Mega Drive version was shown at CES in 94, but THQ, who owned the Akira license, eventually scrapped the project along with several other Akira games for various platforms. 
Madness House of Fun was a planned Mega Drive game revolving around the London ska band Madness and named after their hit House of Fun, being developed by Gremlin. However, despite the name, it seems that the game wouldn't actually feature the band, instead starring Mr. Smash, a character loosely based on Madness trumpet player Chaz Smash. Slated for a 94 release, House of Fun was to feature 14 platforming levels and was actually based on an Amiga platformer called Harlequin, which I actually rather enjoyed back in the day. So if you've played that, then you have an idea of how the game would have played. Looking at the screenshots, the gameplay would have been relatively unchanged, but with Mega Drive adaptations of several Madness songs as the music. It was previewed in both Meme Machine Sega and Mega Force, but was cancelled before release for unknown reasons. Resq, spelled R-E-S-Q, was in development from Tempest Software and was to be published by Cygnosis and was to be a Mega Drive exclusive. A 2D action platformer in which the player controls both the spaceship and a soldier on foot and also featured on-rail shooter bonus stages. Rescue looks like it had a lot of potential and looks more like an Amiga title than a project intended for the Mega Drive, reminiscent of games like Turrican. This may be due to the fact that it was developed on 486 PCs, with the graphics being designed using deluxe paint on Amiga 1200s. Rescue was scrapped by Cygnosis when it was almost complete, but a ROM is available online. Beyond Zero Tolerance was a planned sequel to the 1994 first person shooter for the Mega Drive published by Accolade, Zero Tolerance. An unfinished prototype was released online by developer Technopop, which shows that the game would have been very similar to its predecessor. Beyond Zero Tolerance was cancelled for some reason or other, but the prototype was dated 1995 when the Mega Drive was relatively old, so perhaps that was a factor. Very little info exists on City Heroes, but from the few screenshots available, we can see that it was a side-scrolling beat-em-up which was, in appearance at least, similar to Streets of Rage. In development by Samsung for the Mega Drive, it was cancelled due to reported issues with Korean censorship. Dino Blaze, also known as Dino Blades, was a planned beat-em-up for the Mega Drive from Bonsai Entertainment and Virgin Interactive with a slated release date of Christmas 1995. As is evident from the available footage, Dino Blaze employed Virgin's Digicel technology which they used to develop the gorgeous looking graphics in Aladdin on the Mega Drive. Gameplay involves controlling a dinosaur on rollerblades as he fights enemies with a hockey stick. The original press release called the game Teenage Mutant Ninja Dinosaurs Playing Street Hockey in New York. This footage is from an early playable prototype from 94 which was leaked online in 2008. It's pretty basic and doesn't contain original music, instead borrowing from Robocop vs Terminator. It was cancelled for unknown reasons. A Ninja Gaiden game was planned for the Mega Drive, sometimes referred to as Ninja Gaiden 4, being developed by Sega in 1992. A side-scrolling beat-em-up in the same vein as the arcade game but with different game mechanics, Ninja Gaiden on the Mega Drive was to see Ryu travel to America in pursuit of two rogue ninjas who have stolen some secret scrolls. A ROM of a beta version was released online containing seven levels but is riddled with bugs and incomplete elements. The graphics aren't great and perhaps the most disappointingly, controlling Ryu is pretty horrendous with the hit detection being absolutely shocking. Ninja Gaiden was cancelled for some reason but perhaps Sega made the decision to can the game after seeing the beta's quality. Hardcore was developed by Digital Illusions, now known as DICE, and was to be published by Cygnosis. A run and gun game, it has an immediate resemblance to games like Turrican, and was apparently 99% complete before Cygnosis cancelled the project, along with all their Mega Drive games in development. Planned for release in late 1994, Hardcore started life on the Amiga, which makes sense given the look of the game actually, it was only 50% complete before moving to the Mega Drive. 
Digital Illusions later petitioned Sony, who then owned Psygnosis, to publish Hardcore, but were unsuccessful and it never saw the light of day. Lobo was due for release in late 1996 and was based on the DC comics of the same name, starring Lobo, an interstellar mercenary and bounty hunter. A versus fighter developed by Ocean, Lobo used pre-rendered graphics much like Mortal Kombat. A playable prototype was found and released by SegaSaturno.com in 2009 which features six playable characters in their relative stages. A Super Nintendo version was also planned, but both were cancelled. With a title that unusually plays on the X-Men franchise, X-Women The Sinister Virus was to be a side-scrolling action game featuring several of the female X-Men, including Storm and Rogue. Being developed by Clockwork Tortoise and planned for a late 96 release, X-Women was to be a spiritual successor to X-Men 2 Clone Wars, but was cancelled when Sega shifted their focus to the Saturn. All that seems to exist is some shockingly poor video from 96's E3 preview, but this is enough to give us a taste of what could have been an interesting addition to the Mega Drive's library. Fido Dido was developed by Teeny Weeny Games and was set to be published in 93 by Kaneko. For those of you watching in North America, Fido Dido was the mascot for the drink 7up, whereas in the States it was Cool Spot. It's interesting actually, as I've always found it odd that we got the Cool Spot games in Europe, given that the mascot was unknown here, and it seems Fido Dido for the Mega Drive was also planned for a stateside release on the Genesis, which is evident from the Genesis box art that was created. It makes sense I suppose as a good game is fun regardless of whether or not you're familiar with the main character beforehand and let's be honest kids don't care much anyway. We know that the game was finished as a complete ROM was released and we can see from the ROM that the game was a platformer with several minigame like segments. This ROM was so widely circulated that it led many to believe that Fido Dido was officially released. In reality it was cancelled but the reasons for this are unknown. The Itchy and Scratchy game is an action platformer that was published by Acclaim on the Super Nintendo and Sega Game Gear based, obviously, on the violent cat and mouse duo from The Simpsons. A Mega Drive port was also planned and a prototype emerged, which shows that it was at least a fair way through the development process. For whatever reason, the Mega Drive version was cancelled. The Shadow of the Beast series was one of the most visually impressive franchises on the Amiga with some fantastic music to boot, and Shadow of the Beast 3 is considered by many to be the pinnacle of the series as it fixed some of the niggling issues that its predecessors had. The footage on screen here is actually from the Amiga version because it was an Amiga exclusive, but a Mega Drive port was planned. Next to no information on this port is available, but it was shown at the Winter CES in 1993 before Psygnosis cancelled the project. We only have magazine screenshots of Dino Racer, also known as Demon Dinosaurs, but we know that it was to be a prehistoric racing game similar to Outrun, the difference being that instead of racing in cars, the player would control cavemen and dinosaurs. Being developed by racing genre aficionados Codemasters, Dino Racer was unreleased, although it's unclear why. Sonic 16 was an idea for a Mega Drive game based on the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon series, also known as Sonic Sat AM. A demo was assembled in late 93, shortly after Sonic Spinball was finished. Intended to be more story driven than previous Sonic games, the Sonic 16 demo seems very slow paced for a Sonic game and features a graphical style to match that of the cartoon series. Sonic has the ability to move in the vertical dimensions as opposed to just horizontally and can hug the walls in order to stealthily avoid detection. The demo also shows various special moves, including the ability to use rings as projectiles in order to kill enemies. Ultimately, Sonic's creator Yuji Naka disapproved of Sonic 16 and the concept never grew beyond this demo. So that was a quick look at 20 of the many unreleased Sega Mega Drive games. Let me know in the comments if any of them in particular caught your eye. And as always, thanks for watching.
You can check out some cancelled games for other consoles by clicking the thumbnails here. <laughs>